Hey guys, it's winter and snowing outside. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build your own heated clothing. Okay, so we're gonna start by going over the main components that we're gonna to need to build your heated clothing. So the first thing you'll notice is this big orange sweater that I've laid out on top of the table. And this is the article of clothing that I've chosen to heat. On top of that, we have three black pads. These are heating pads that are meant to go inside of a heated jacket, vest, or sweater. I got them off of eBay. I'll put links in the description below. On top of each pad, you'll notice three electrical connectors. These are quick disconnects so that we can remove these pads from the sweater in the event that we wanna wash the sweater. Over here, you'll see a PWM controller, also off of eBay, very cheap. Um, it's rated at eight amps, it says maximum, but it can do continuous five amps. Comes with a on off button and an adjustment knob. You're gonna need some wiring. I chose to use 16 gauge wire for this project. You're also gonna need a power source. So this is a 12 volt tool battery from Milwaukee. Now these things are available online. You can buy them on eBay. You can buy them from Milwaukee directly. And they're used to run some of Milwaukee's small tools, but they're also used in Milwaukee's heated jackets and sweaters. And so I chose this specifically for that reason. It's about 1500 milliamp hours and it's uh, 12 volts as I had mentioned. And you're gonna need something to interface with this battery. Now you have a couple options. You can build your own, or you can, again, from Milwaukee, buy their actual adapter. So the battery slides into this thing, and you'll see on the side, there's a plug where you can access 12 volt power. So this is very convenient. The, they are a little bit expensive for what you're getting, but the convenience factor is what you're paying for. And also a nice cool feature is on the bottom side, there is a USB plug. And so you can charge your phone or something while you're using your heated vest, which is a nice option. So the one that I have here has been gutted and I'm not actually gonna be using this. Later in the video, I'll show you how I built my own. And so it is possible to take a, a battery that you can find off the shelf and build your own adapter. I have a lot of Milwaukee tools, and so I have the charger, and this is why I chose a Milwaukee battery. Of course, you can choose any other manufacturer that you please. So before we build anything, we need to come up with a plan and understand how the system works. So in front of me here, I have the three heating pads, the PWM controller, and the battery. The battery is rated at 12 volts, as I mentioned earlier, and the heating pads were rated at 7.4 volts according to the eBay listing. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, but let's assume it's correct. If I plug the heating pads directly into the battery at 12 volts, things are probably gonna get pretty hot. Probably not gonna catch on fire, but might be a little too hot when it's so close to our skin inside of something like a sweater. Now, we need to regulate the amount of power that is going to these heating pads, and this is where the PWM controller comes into play. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. And basically this is just a fancy way of saying that it's a switch that controls the amount of on time versus off time. So when you use the adjustment knob to turn the time up, basically it's allowing the on time for the 12 volt uh, power source connected to the heating pads to go up. So it's on longer and you'll get more heat. As you turn the knob down, the off time increases and the heating of the pads will actually decrease. And so you'll have a way to actually adjust the amount of heat inside your heated clothing. So with that being said, my plan is to put the PWM controller in one pocket and the power source in the other pocket. And of course, these two are gonna be, need to be connected by wires and the wires will run from one pocket to the other inside the back of the sweater. Now, the wiring for this project is very simple and you can see on the back cover of the PWM controller, that there are basically four wires that need to be connected here. So you have your power, positive and negative, you can see that at the top, and then it says motor, positive and negative in the middle here. Now, motor of course is gonna be replaced by our heated elements that you can still see in the background, and that is pretty much all you're gonna have to do to get this thing fired up. So one other thing worth mentioning is that if you do use the PWM controller that I purchased, on the back side, it originally came with screw terminals for these connections that I just mentioned. Now on mine, of course, you don't see screw terminals, you see a Molex connector. I chose to desolder the screw terminals and solder on a nice Molex connector because it has a locking tab. And this is gonna prevent the wires from pulling out of the screw terminals if you're, no sh you're shuffling around for things in your pocket 
and you know you accidentally snag one of those wires you definitely don't want your power source being shorted out and so this is going to prevent that from happening and it's going to give me a nice secure connection i would recommend that you do the same thing so the first step in this build is to make the heating pads detachable and the first thing we got to do then is install these connectors that i mentioned in the beginning of the video and these are just two pin connectors positive and negative which can easily be detached and attached so we're going to leave a little bit of room here and we're going to cut the heating pads off. So right now they're actually connected to one junction right here. But of course, like I said, we're gonna cut these off and we're gonna solder in these connectors. So you're gonna want to solder the connectors in and of course use some sort of heat shrink tubing to separate the wires and make sure you don't get any shorts. So now with the connectors soldered onto each of the heating pads and the other connectors soldered to the other end of the harness, it's time to select a location for these heating pads. Now, as I mentioned, I have a sweater here, so I have one heating pad on one side of my chest, another heating pad on the other side of my chest, and the final one in the middle of my back. And how we're gonna attach these to the sweater is that we're gonna be using an old t-shirt. I'm gonna cut this up, and we're gonna sew on some pockets on the inside of the sweater so that each of these heating elements can slip in and out of the pockets because I want to be able to remove these heating elements in order to wash this sweater. If you guys have a piece of clothing that you're never going to wash, you can pretty much just sew these directly to the inside of your clothing if you want. But I would really recommend getting some cloth, an old t-shirt or something, so that we can sew on some pockets. So let's go ahead and do that. So now with the three pockets stitched into place, you can see that the heating pads have been slipped inside and they're easily removable. I've reconnected the wires back to each of the heating pads. So all three are connected. And now we're gonna deal with wiring this harness. So after connecting the three different heating pads, you can see that the three pads lead back to this junction and the junction just ends up being two wires. Now these two wires here are going to be fed into our PWM controller that I showed you guys earlier. We're gonna put this controller into one of the pockets of the sweater. And so what I did was I snipped a very tiny little hole on the inside of the sweater pocket and I fed those two wires through the hole and into the inside of the pocket. Like I said, this is where our controller is gonna be. At this point, I also took the positive and negative wire that I showed you guys earlier, that 16 gauge wire, and I cut one end off and I slipped that through the hole too because we're gonna to need to get power to that controller. So you have two wires that come to the heaters and two wires that are eventually gonna to go to the batteries. Both slid into this pocket. Now after pulling those wires through the pocket, you can see here that I have attached them to this plug. So this, this was that Molex connector. This is a four pin Molex connector that I showed you earlier. The other half of it, I soldered onto the PWM controller board. And this is of course is going to plug in to that other connector. Now looking at the other pocket, you can see that I've taken the 16 gauge positive negative wire and I've cut a little hole into the inside of this pocket. So this is the other side of my sweater. And I fed that through that little hole as well. So basically we have the 16 gauge wire, positive and negative, running from one pocket to the other pocket. And on this side of my sweater, this is where I'm gonna put my power supply, so my battery. So what we have at this point is the positive and negative 16 gauge wire running from one pocket to the other, with of course the connector that I showed you connected on this side. The other side is just free wire at this point. We have all three heating pads connected and this harness running into the pocket where the controller is gonna be. And now it's time to tidy up these wires. I'm gonna try and bunch them together and clean this wiring up and then eventually hide it inside of this wire loom. So this split wire loom is gonna run from one pocket to the other with all of these wires tucked inside to prevent them from getting snagged and it's gonna look nice and clean. With the wires tucked away into the loom, the sweater is starting to look a little bit cleaner and everything is starting to come together. And now it's time to move on to the PWM controller and finishing that aspect of the build. So the controller that I purchased off of eBay, it has a case for the actual PCB, but as you can see, the on off switch and the volume knobs are not part of that case. And so I have access to a 3D printer and I was able to design and build a case for this, which will incorporate the on off switch and the knob. Now, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you might wanna look on eBay for a PWM controller 
that has everything encased so you don't have to do this custom step. For those of you guys who do have a 3D printer and do want to use this particular controller, I will make these design files available on Thingverse or GrabCAD and you guys can download those and use them for your own project. So assembling the PWM controller in the case is very simple. We're gonna start by feeding the power button through and it just sits inside of there. I might use some glue to glue this thing down and keep it from coming back out. So we'll do that in a second. And the next thing you're gonna do is just put the actual controller through and it'll snap into place. And you can see it's nice and secure with the PCB on the back. With the PCB cover snapped into place, now it's time to install the knob. So this simply just slides off and on the back side, you'll see a little hole there that's gonna line up with the tab on this knob. It's going to get inserted like so. And on the front side, there's a thread. So this uh, PWM controller comes with a nut and a little washer. We're gonna install those on there and you'll be able to press the knob back on for your adjustment. And like I said, I'm gonna have to glue this button through and it'll look something like this when it's done. Now on the back side, we're gonna tuck all the wires in there and in the design files that I provide, there'll also be a cover for the back and that screws on with four M3 screws and we'll get to that in a second. So with the button and the knob and the PCB installed into this custom case, we can flip over on the back and see that the only thing left to connect is that four pin connector. So this is that connector that I showed you guys earlier and just to recap, two of the wires, positive and negative, are coming from the heating elements and the other two wires, positive and negative, are the 16 gauge wire that we ran across the sweater into the other pocket and these are going to be connected to the battery in the other pocket. Now I threaded these through the back of the case that I made for this guy here and so I'm going to just connect this into this connector, screw the case shut and the controller will be complete. So now this is what the controller looks like when it is complete. And you can see on the back side the covers on there, the four M3 screws. And we're gonna be able to just slip this thing back into the pocket and that's where it will stay. So moving on to the other pocket, this is where you're going to keep your battery. Now you have a couple options for connecting the battery. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can buy the heated jacket adapter directly from Milwaukee, if of course you're using the Milwaukee 12 volt battery. And this is a nice little piece with a battery life indicator. So you just press the button on top and it'll show how much battery life is left. It has a USB connection on there as well. So you can charge your phone at the same time as using your jacket. Um, but these things are a little bit expensive. And if you don't want to spend the money on this adapter, you can of course make your own. Now this is one that I had 3D printed. So the design files will be available in the links in the description. And this guy here is pretty straightforward and simple. It's two pieces. There's a cap and there's the part that the battery snaps onto. Inside, it's a little bit difficult to see, but if you shine some light in there, you'll see two spade connectors and those are soldered onto some prototype board. And the prototype board is just screwed onto the top of this 3D printed piece. And those spade connectors will connect into these little slots, one of them positive, one of them negative for this 12 volt battery. And like I said, it'll just clip into place. So I should be able to just snap it in. And that's all there is to it. It's connected. And the positive and negative wire are of course running through the inside of the sweater over to our PWM controller. One other thing to mention is that if you're using the Milwaukee adapter, in order to connect your positive and negative wire, you're gonna go to your local electronics store and find a little plug that fits in there you're gonna to have to solder the plug to your positive and negative wire, and that's gonna give you a constant 12 volt source because there's a regulator in here, and that keeps uh, 12 volts, even though the voltage on the battery will drop as it dies. At this point, it's time to test things out and make sure everything is working. So I'm gonna plug the battery in, and you'll notice that we have power. There's this little red dot indicating that we have power. When I press the red button, we should see something on the display. So it's set at zero right now, and as we turn the knob, you'll see the numbers starting to increase, indicating that the power is increasing. Now the display is upside down from this view. That's because we're looking from the bottom of the sweater. But of course, if I was wearing the sweater, this would be right side up for me. 
So now that the sweater has been on for about a minute or so, we can test how hot it is. And you'll see here that the non-heated section is about 21 or 22 degrees Celsius. And the back pad is somewhere around, I'd say, just depending on where you put this thing, somewhere around their 40 to 45 degree range, depending on where you point this. So it's definitely working and it's providing heat. So it should be nice and toasty when I put this thing on. So that's all it takes to build your own heated clothing, guys. It's fun, easy to do, and it's a lot cheaper than going out and buying those clothes. And remember, you can install these heating pads into sweaters, vests, jackets, pants, whatever it takes for you guys to keep warm. So just get creative, have fun with it, and be sure to check out some of my other videos.